This is Lessons of the 60s. Lessons of the 60s is a project to document social justice work in Washington, D.C. from 1960 to 1975. Today's interview is with Earth Onion, a local women's theater group. Julie? Earth Onion was a women's improvisational theater group that was in D.C. For an, and functioned from about 1970 to 1975. We began through the women's liberation movement in Washington, D.C. and worked very closely with many other political groups and movements in the area. We performed extensively throughout the Washington, D.C. area and toured uh, around the country for about, the, about three years. And we, we all came here differently and met up here and we came, uh, I, came, I came from after sort of being in Spain for a couple of years and then to Cleveland and I ended up in Woodstock and then I had a job actually for $15 an hour uh, doing anti-war work, to, um, organizing anti-war works in, in, in high schools and colleges and then I came from that background uh, to into the into the women's movement and where I met these fine ladies. <laughs> I was in a small school, New College, in Sarasota, Florida, and we had been working there for two years and one needed a break. And I came up here for a conference, met all, went to the Washington Hilton and met all these hippies sprawled out all over the entire floor of the Washington Hilton. And I thought, this is paradise. <laughs> And I, you know, met, went to a couple of group houses that were cooperative housing, and met more people. Of course, there's a man involved, and um, ended up uh, coming back in January uh, of 1969 uh, to live in Washington in an intentional community. And my coming was a little less pretty than theirs. <laughs> I was working in Chicago. the project as it was written and on the night after the Martin Luther King riots when Martin Luther King was killed and the riots were coming to an end I was kidnapped and raped in Chicago by two men who were thought to be Croatian by the police but whatever it was the Labor Department the next day the people that I was working on the project with called the Labor Department and they said that they would send people to pack me out and for me to come back to D.C. But my friends packed me out and I left and came back to D.C. When I got back to D.C. in that project, which was a lovely, wonderful, progressive project, and Nixon came in, the project was no longer lovely and wonderful and I really couldn't stomach it. So I quit and drifted into these wonderful <laughs> left <laughs> circles and changed my life forever. <laughs> so so how do you think, I mean, because why don't you tell us about your introduction to Earth Onion, how that how that How that off. came. Yeah. And yeah. also how the name came, Earth Onion. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, we can talk about that, yeah. <laughs> why don't yeah. you tell about the name, okay. see what okay. your memory says, because okay. I got one too. <laughs> so talk about how you, because yeah. really, okay, you yeah. were... Instigated. Uh, okay. One of um, the well, I think that in the course of my development, I was exposed to free Southern theater, which I just loved. And bef between graduating from college and getting involved in civil rights again, I was li living in Tampa where I did some community theater. I've always loved theater, theater since I was a little girl. And I think that I thought if you could have a life in theater, you'd have a wonderful life. But it was not wonderful in the community theater because the people were really backstabbing mean <laughs> people. So in my mind, I thought, well, you can never do theater. you got to cross that off. But when I saw Free Southern Theater down south, I thought, ooh, there is a possibility that you could do theater with wonderful people and say something wonderful. So that was always a yearning of mine. And then as the Women's Liberation Office became more and more mm, anti-man, to the point that they were anti-babies, uh, 
Male babies. Male babies. Anti-male babies for the New Year's Eve party. And at that point, Jan Fenty and I realized it was not our movement. That women's liberation office movement was not ours because we really believed in babies. And you could be whatever you were when you were a baby. So <laughs> at the meeting... <laughs> <laughs> where Rita Mae Brown told us that we were not women-identified women, uh, Jan and I stood up and said, well, this is not our movement then. And Judy Davis remembers me standing up and saying, I don't know what I'm going to do, but I think I'll start a women's theater. And that was that was the kernel. And I guess through our whole connection, my kind of, thought of it is that Carol kind of knew what was going on and Carol kind of got us all to come it together. Carol Weisberg. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So and, how did you actually start? Tell us about the start. <laughs> I think there were people, you know, there were uh, many people who were interested in doing it and Carol really brought us together. There were, I think, about a core group at that point of about nine or ten people that changed over the first year. And people had backgrounds in theater, wanted to dance, wanted to um, do political theater. We all had different ideas of what we wanted to do. And so we started meeting um, in each other's house, houses and jamming. And one of our goals was never to have another meeting. <laughs> that lasted about five minutes. <laughs> so we were out, obviously. But um, anyway, that was really our goal, is to play and dance and do things differently yeah. than having meetings. And we really wanted to get out of the dogma and the rhetoric and into our bodies and, and uh, really ex be able to express underneath. We talked about instead of consciousness raising, we talked about consciousness lowering, and definitely in our bodies. But we started off, one of our first performance was a, um, as, as Julie said, this group of folks who had come together, and we performed for the, the, um, the National Liberation Front, Vietnamese National Liberation Front birthday party. And we got a little whiff about Oh my goodness, this is so needed. It was, it, it, people loved it, we loved it, it was very exciting and it was so invigorating and, and such, such a need. I want to emphasize that because I feel it still is. <laughs> but it was such a need that we were feeling at that time. And so for the first year, for the, from 70 to 71, we really did do a lot of politically oriented uh, theater. We were also inspired by groups like It's All Right to Be Woman from New York and uh, Caravan Theater from Boston, who ha were theater groups who, who we saw and got excited about. There was very little theater, uh, theater in the sense of fringe theater going on in Washington, very different than today. Um, so, so we really were initiating that. So we did a welfare piece and we did... Later, we did a, a piece about Medici from, a, from Brazil, who was a dictator of Brazil. And we evolved then into doing um, our, our, what became our um, two-year uh, play that we did, which was Woman Potion, which we'll talk about later. But tell about the, the meet, what you remember about the meeting. Oh, about, yeah. about how we right, formed right. our Basically, <laughs> I think it was at my house in Tacoma Park, and we were in a circle. And we were just jamming with songs and singing different songs from the 60s and various things. And we were very stoned. And <laughs> anyway, we um, basically came up with, uh, started with Earth Angel, Earth Angel. And that somehow morphed into Earth, Earth Onion. Onion. <laughs> so we we liked it. Layers, Earth Onion. Peeling, the, peeling layers. the layers of ourselves um, and having many, many layers and many, many colors of onion and 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 I'll remember say this now because I won't remember it later, is that eventually there were scallions, little scallions yes. who were part of her thing. Yes, yes. And yes. many scallions. And did you we, travel? Did you go around the country with her? Yes. We did, yes. yes. We, did. we had three major tours and then a lot of other tours. Our first tour was in the south, and we were in a mail truck, which broke down several times, and in Susie's Renault. And we had eight women and two babies. And the, the mail truck was, we, you know, it was converted so we could sleep in the mail truck. So some people would sleep in the mail truck. Other people would sleep in houses along the way. And we ended up at one point in Atlanta in my suburban house. 
and we were there, you know, rehearsing madly because we had this, we had a show, our first show was a show called um, Elsa and the Tuntlerwald, which the best I can think, it was formed from a fairy tale, from the Purple Fairy Tale book, and it was really about liberation and utopia. <laughs> now, God knows what that had to do with anything, but that was it. It was very movement-oriented, very surreal, very dreamlike. Um, <laughs> freeing and, women. And freeing women, going, you know, moving to a perfect community of all women. And we managed to perform this place, in, this play in um, Atlanta, Georgia, at a couple of places, <laughs> and in Fort Bragg at the FTA Coffee House. So you can imagine... We walk in, we go into the coffee house wearing nothing but leotards, and the guys thought we were just dancing girls. Another group, girly of, show. Girl, the girly show, you know, and um, and of course they loved it. I mean, they had you know probably had no idea what we were doing, and I'm not sure we did either. But they loved the show, and um, Susie will tell you about what the, the women workshop. in the military. Oh. <laughs> oh right. So, I mean, my memory of that show that we did for the men was that. We were stoned, but I don't know if we were or not. But there we were in our leotards floating around, and the men were catcalling the whole time. And the next day we go to meet with the women off. Well, they weren't officers, I guess, but just women, enlisted women or women soldiers. And we met with them in the morning, and they criticized us for being, as women, representing women in a women's theater, being too pretty and our bodies being too perfect. And... I would, I would giggle and say, well, yeah, can't please everybody, so here we are. But you also did, you, I think you, can, you mentioned about conducting a workshop with 70 women on, lying on the floor. And all. Not there, though. Yeah, no? No, no. Wasn't that no, no, in the, no, in the uh, not article? Not in the military. Yeah. Oh, okay. Not in the military, not in the military. No. 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 not in the military, but in no. the southern tour. There wasn't oh. one in the southern tour yeah, that yeah, we did. Yeah, not in the yeah. military, in the southern There were seven, <coughs> 75 women. I don't remember it, but... I thought it was you. The, workshop, no. the <laughs> workshops were really an important part of what we did, though. So where else did you the, tour? Uh, well, we had, th we had three major tours. One to the south, that was in 71, and then we went to the northeast in 72, all around the northeast. And then in, the, in 73, we went all around the Midwest. Um, so we had a lot of, a lot of scope. And the, the nice thing about all of those is that you have to remember, the, again, the period, because there was a lot of wonderful political theater going on. And so in the, our travels, and sometimes here, and sometimes at festivals, we got to meet and work with some of the fabulous people, like the San Francisco Mime Troupe. And we spent a, 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 a week in, in, at Goddard, where the, the uh, Bread and Puppet Theater was, and, the, and Luis Valdez, and the Teatro Campesino, and, and, and Josh Mostel and Tony Abeson, who was doing Gutowski work, and Otra Banda, who ended up being sort of a brother-sister group with us um, yeah. later on. And so, mm -hmm. so w w it was very exciting to be part of a political movement and a political movement in theater that was going the living, the living theater and, of course, here, the living stage, that uh, Rebecca Rice that we work with. So... Yeah. What was happening to us as well was that we were becoming almost contradictory to what we set out, more professionalized. So we were, we were getting, we were learning the craft. Um, even though many of us had come from different areas, from dance or puppetry and stuff, as, as Julie mentioned, but we, we actually uh, were finding ourselves very disciplined and really becoming much more of a of a theater troupe, which had some interesting repercussions. Because as all this was going on, of course, all the, all the things about the war were going on. The war was coming to a close, and there were, the people were confused, and there was a lot of uh, political divisions. And, and even in ourselves, as uh, at the later part, we had disagreements about whether we wanted to professionalize more or whether we wanted to be more of a political theater. So, so that was... Those were interesting, but those tours were great. I mean, they were very exciting and very dynamic, and the women's movement carried us because it was those schools that invited us, and, and we got to universities mostly, okay. and, and then we would do high schools, and then yeah. we would do these workshops for church ladies, and you know, I mean, it was just... Yeah. Um, Talk more about those workshops. Yeah. 
We did a workshop at St. Elizabeth's. Um, that was I love doing the workshops. Um, I, that's yeah. the most strong memory I have is the St. Elizabeth's one. But I, by the time, and this seems like it's kind of skipping ahead a little. But um, after I, I did do a lot. Did did the the tour to Goddard, and I did the Southern tour. But then when we were rehearsing, Zafra chopped off the top of her finger in a rehearsal, and I was in the hospital for a month with her. Then I got pregnant with Layla, then I realized that I couldn't continue to tour. And at first, what I really wanted to do was establish the educational arm of Earth Onion. But it was with all those conflicts going and all the push to professionalize, I still wanted it to be that we were working together, that it was a um, team of sisters. <laughs> and some of the sisters didn't want, they just wanted me to get it funded and not bring the details to the meetings. They would say, just do it, write it, get it funded. And we did get a grant. We got a grant from the yeah. arts yeah. that I was part National of writing. $10,000 that, of the arts. that yeah. supported and the, yeah. nine women, mm -hmm. three of them having children. So. Yeah. Right, yeah. You could do that a little bit more back then. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, and so back to the children for our very first play. Zafra was two weeks old and was on my back. Mm -hmm. And I thought I was like a Vietnamese actress in the... <laughs> right. Celebrating. Vietnamese. In the zone <laughs> with my baby on my back. So yeah, there was a lot. There were a lot of zones. I, mm. I, I want to yeah. just say something about that zone first, and then before we go into it, because it's mm -hmm. part of it. Because uh, that was the essence for me of of uh, of Earth Onion. I think is getting into that creative zone, which had so much to do with connecting to a a, a, a public, to a people mm -hmm. who who responded so immediately. And that's the thing about theater is that you're right there. So we saw that. And so our, our plays and our workshops um, were, were about our lives, looking at our lives universally and, and the points of our lives. I mean, you know, coming from, you know, as Susie mentioned, the rape, and we had our stories of abortion, and we had stories of job interviews, and we had stories that really were very serious. But they also were very funny. I mean, we happened to, we made a lot of fun out of them. I mean, there's, you know, these articles that we'll share with you. But, you know, we had, we did a whole thing of cock rock and, and you know, and, and, and how that influenced, you know, the underpants scene and a, 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 a piece that we did around uh, a clothing piece about fighting for clothing and what that does and, and adornment. adornment and um, so... So a lot of those pieces, they came from our lives. They started off with our, with our own lives. And then we, we tried to do that in the workshops as well, to get people to The other there. thing that we did, I think that was really powerful, that I found one of the most powerful people, we asked people for their stories, and we acted them out. And that was, if you know anything about improvisational story, that's a real risk. Because you, you, know, you want to do it right, and you want to honor people, you want to make it respect them. And then you ask them for a new ending. So if it's a bad, you know, if they had a story that came with a bad outcome or with something, then you say, okay, what would you do? What is your, what would th be the outcome? And people would do that. And uh, to me, I mean, I had people coming up to me sobbing and crying and said, this is the most powerful thing I've ever gone through. And, you know, it was really, I mean, I didn't always work out that way. And that when you risk that in the improv, you, you know, you have to really be delicate with people because they're often pouring out, you know, pretty traumatic stories. They were tra pretty traumatic stories um, sometimes that people would bring us and in a live audience, you know. And so that was, to me, a very powerful um, mm -hmm. part of our performing. Um, and sometimes I think because we, you know, did, it was different every time. I kind of forget that we did that, you yeah, know. Yeah, but, um, yeah. The years that you were doing these plays um, were also the years that women's consciousness raising groups were going on. You mm -hmm. know, this new yeah. thing where women would come together with other women and yeah, talk about right. their most intimate feelings. Right, and right, stuff. Mm -hmm. right. And I think mm -hmm. your theater played right into that because it was, I mean, what you're talking about is doing improvisations. It was a lot like the consciousness raising groups. I think things came back and forth mm -hmm. between the That's theater true. And, yeah. and, and That's the groups. That's true. Sort of was a link. 
and, and kind of to go along with what Lynn was saying about the conflict between professionalism and what brought us together at first was just a personal exploration is I think as we did develop artistically with the play Woman Potion, which was the main play that toured at the end and had all these scenes in it, is that some people wanted, one of the criticisms was that we didn't have a director, that we each developed different portions of it and then those were part of the performance, but that we didn't have a thread of directorial leadership through us. And it, it had its pros and cons, yes. you yes, know. It was yeah, more, right. in a way, it was more like a variety show, I guess, yeah. because it was yeah. threaded together mm -hmm. that way. But it also had a lot of flavor and spunk. Mm -hmm. And we didn't have a writer either. We each wrote our own pieces. And we each, um, you know, kind of, yeah. So, yeah, a lot of uh, people who are very engaged now are going to look at this and they're going to wonder, would you, if you were going to do this now, what sort of themes, what kind of stories would you do now? Or, really how, good would, yeah, or how would the pieces you've done in the past relate to things that are happening now? What are the issues? Well, it sort of relates to your your question of that. Sort of relates to what we're doing now too. I mean, in a way. I mean, I I I think that it's not it's not a different process. I mean, personally, I'm I've been I was involved with a a group of of women who were um, from twelve different Latin American countries. Um, some of them undocumented, and so we did this style of. Uh, of work that Earth Onion worked to learn English, and so it was very interesting. We ended up doing a forum, forum theater in our community, and and a little bit beyond, to bring up questions of immigration. So that's very pertinent right now, for example. But I, I think you know what I don't know. What other things would you? And you did workplace theater. I did that, workplace theater in a, in a big county government where they just tasked me with doing workplace theater to basically use humor and community building to get over some of the things you have to do in a workplace, like learn a new computer system. I created a radio um, a drama series that, that people would get on their phones that was about the next step in this horrible computer system that everybody hated. And then I did a how to be, how to move. It was kind of how to be a millionaire skit that everybody could be part of. And what I found from that, you know, it was just kind of what happened once and then people said, the director of the department said, could you do this again? Could you do this again? It really was like use of humor and as building, com and theater is building community. And I feel like that's what I've looked for in anything else I've done is building community. And, you know, theater has informed that. Um, now I think it, what I find it's very hard and I, you know, my son has done a play and he, for his first play and he's found it and his partner's a playwright is that you're, you can't reach many people as in theater, I don't think. I mean, unless you use social media, unless you use film, it's, it's just, w there's so many more of us and, so, and the world is so much bigger and I'm trying to think about how you do that, you know, through social media, through other forms using theater, because it is, I, I think it is. I mean, we were at the march, and we saw no theater. And I know there were things going on. I mean, there was, uh, Bread and Puppet was at that march, and I'm sure there were other, there were a few little drummers that we saw, and we burst into song one time, but it was hard. Which march um, you the about? women's The women's march, when uh, right up, and in uh, January 2017, 21st, 2017, January 21st, yeah. right after Trump. Yeah. And we, you know, basically, it was just hard, and I, I think part of that is just, you know, a, a totally different view, a different um, viewpoint with media and with celebrity and that kind of thing. And the kind of theater we would have done would not work. But, um, uh, you know, I think it's rethinking how you do things to get a broader kind of audience. But those issues are vital. Go ahead, Susan. Look at that. <laughs> I was after Earth Onion. I did do theater that was influenced by the Cuban Escambray Theater, which was to gather people's stories and then create original musical plays using those. And then based on the Earth Onion experience, we did have a playwright in the residence who would, we would improv from the oral histories that we collected, but then the playwright would structure the improvisation 
with the playwright's view. And it's, I think Julie's right that you don't reach people through theater, but it, when Trump was elected, I mean, probably the next day, I thought, if I was a young person, I would really like to go off into those Trump communities and mm -hmm. do Escobar mm -hmm. style, come in with folk tales and work my way in and try to get those issues and try to do this, do that style theater. But mm -hmm. I'm not, so. <laughs> there, there are lots of issues. Yeah, <laughs> and right. they're very similar. <laughs> so <laughs> they're, they're, yeah. Do you think that okay. Earth Onion had, on the communities you visited, mm -hmm. and even in the local Washington community, mm -hmm. I want to say something here, as a person who's not an Earthonian, that's a good question, but to me, who was a, I was a peace activist at that, at that moment, um, you guys seem to be showing up everywhere, you know, in, in many different kinds of, uh, during or after, different marches and whatever, you know, so what are some of the community things in D.C. that you sort of, it, that you sort of worked on? I know housing was an issue for mm -hmm for some of you, mm -hmm. and uh, what other issues were you, did and, you show and up And welfare. We were, did a, a piece on welfare that we, we worked on. And, and then we did the, we did, um, I had slightly mentioned about Medici, which was a, uh, there was a dictatorship going on in Brazil, and we had the fortune of meeting um, some people who had been actually followers of Paulo Freire, who, who was a, an educator and had been uh, uh, um, imprisoned, and his followers, who were going out to teach literacy, had been uh, tortured and, uh, you know, so we, we met some of those folks and were very, and there was, uh, Augusto Baal was a, 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 um, a, a person who did theater, forum theater also at that agit, what we used to call agit prop at that time. So we got very influenced by that. And we're in Washington, so it's a very political environment. So I think we were very, you know, we were, uh, we did some, a, a great piece on, on that with, I know I was Medici, we had, yes. who, who was on my lap? Who was Nixon? We're, no <laughs> our puppet Nixon. Yeah, well, we could yeah. do a lot of things today too. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. yeah, but um, so we would do things like that. It was more guerrilla theater style, but we also did, you know, we did show up, but we were part of yeah. celebrations and, right. yeah. uh, you know, I think those workshops actually were very important too to get into different things that were going on. And I think on. we were teaching other people how to do the same thing. I right. Mean, that there right. were groups, right. other groups that were forming that wanted to do theater, street theater and, you know, various things. We did workshops for them so that they could go out, create their own pieces and, um, you know, and go into the community. And I remember working yeah. with other, could you tell other us groups. A little bit for so. people who don't, know, who don't know about it, would you, would you tell our, um, our watchers of this um, what the NLF uh, annual birthday party was? It went on for several years. Go on. How was it? <laughs> All I remember was the, it was the celebration of the National Liberation Front of yeah. Vietnam. Yeah. And in particular, I, 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 I know, you know, like we, we did we say were we, were, at war. we were at war, of course, in Vietnam and we were, you know, and many of us had come from working in anti-war movement as well. So we were celebrating that the NLF was a very positive force and also very poetic. You know, the mm -hmm. cultural, I, I think, you know, you asked about, about what we did to the community. I think it was, it was what art does for everything. It just gives the spirit and the soul and ref reflects the soul and spirit and so I think we did that through theater but you know certainly as you know you said there's lots of ways now that are going on with whether it's you know social media and video and, and spoken word but and yeah poetry and and I think that, it, that theater is very viable in that as well yeah uh, you know part of it yeah yeah and part of it so it's a spirit it was a spirit and it was spirit for us you know, mm -hmm. for me, and it yeah. really. No, it definitely right. yeah. 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 yeah, 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 yeah. And I think it's skill building too. I think people always feel best when they accomplish something. And as a group of women, we gained a lot of skills. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then taught those skills yeah. to other people. Share them. And we, you know, we really 
were ordinary. So we, we loved that we were ordinary. We weren't, you know, we weren't famous actresses as much as we might have wanted to be at some time, but we were, you know, we were just regular. And I think being regular people who could go out and express themselves, have a good time, love each other, you know, and really, you know, be, be there was, uh, you know, something that really helped people to get that spirit. I get my spirits are raised, you know. Again, back to the women's march. When you, when I see these pieces of humor, when I <laughs> watch and I can and I can laugh at a situation that's very difficult, it gives me the courage to go on. So that's mm -hmm. what part of what we were doing, huh? Mm -hmm. And I will say one uh, when I, you asked the question about uh, Eddie, you asked the question about what would you do now. And uh, one thing in terms of our feminism and our focus on women's issues is that. It's taken me a long, I mean, I've been shocked by how far back we've gone in terms of women's issues and thinking about the clothing. I keep thinking about the clothing piece, which was basically this piece where we start out nude, but in uh, nude leotards, and slowly talk about adornment. And, you know, it's adding piece and piece, and then pretty soon it's this frenzy of, no, I'm going to take yours, I'm going to take <laughs> yours, no. <sighs> and fighting over clothes until we're just grotesque, covered in clothes. But, uh, you know, now, there are things, I mean, things have gotten so much more, um, uh, you know, focused on that, on, on, on looks and, I mean, compared to our Reed. time, looks and beauty and if you're not a certain type, you're gone and, and the kind of folk, and, and young women are, you know, buy into that all the time. I mean, that's just, you know, it has to do with the corporate the change and social media and, and the um, ubiquity of, of big media that I think has... So it, I've thought about how we would do that differently now, and it's a little bit scary. But yeah. I, I'm working with a group of people today, and we're, we're you know we're trying to figure out that question. Well, what are we going to be talking about? And um, and it's a, it's a women's group. It's very informal. But um, one of the things that that we would uh, you know we've talked about is medical, the medical system, and medicine, and pharmaceuticals, and and it can get very funny when you think of it, if you think of all the ads that are going mm, on and how we yeah. get captured by these ads with sudden death. <laughs> so we're, you know, uh, there's so mm. many, there's so many issues. It's just finding what's close to your heart and going out there doing it. I think, oh, I was just going to add, for me, I think, because I have worked in schools and in middle schools and high schools, for me, one of the passions would be young women, school age before they graduate, but really middle school on, I've seen it, mm -hmm. where young women really demean themselves for attention in really sexual, awful ways. And mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I feel very passionately about it, wishing and hoping that I could find a way, and I still may be able to find a way, to help them build their own self-esteem and realize their beauty and their power and their glory without having to demean themselves that way. And I think you could do that through theater. And that you could yeah. do right in a school, right, you know. Yeah. You know, one of the things that about uh, our lives after, after Earth Onion and the influences of, about Earth Onion, I mean, I, I feel like uh, as an educator, I took those skills and they made my life as a teacher so much more worthwhile and certainly for my students, <laughs> you know, uh, uh, to be, to see the influence of arts in education and I, I also work with some children, with kids, that was a, a big thing for me doing a children's theater group and uh, improvisational group and again, it came from their lives. So the, what we learned from Earth Onion for me personally has been, uh, has guided me all these years. Uh, they're very important skills and they, it's interesting to me how they haven't changed. My, both of my children went to School for the Arts and Theater and they were, they shared all their stuff with me which was really fun. We got three for, mm -hmm. three for one. But, um, but the, the amazing thing is how the skills that we were learning were still being taught or still, you know, being used as, as sort of pivotal points, Viola Spolin, you know, all of those things. So anyway, how about your lives? I think, well, I really, I went into it, it went kind of to, I had two tracks, well, first was the arts, which was kind of through my 20s, and then I went into healing, and that's, so I worked as a nurse in hospitals, and then in 
public health. And I think my the work in Earth Onion and the uh, women's movement and the community really informed being a public health person. Um, we had to f go into different communities and get those communities to trust us in order to um, to come to us. And we had to um, you know work with a very broad spectrum of um, of groups. And I had a I managed a group of about 20 people from 12 different countries, and so we did a lot of role play. And I worked with people to do role play around issues that we were dealing with. You know, I had to, you know, we took on STDs at, for after a while, and I was teaching both, um, both in my role in public health, and then as later as a faculty at, um, at a local university, teaching people how to ask really personal questions. Um, in an STD clinic. It took a lot of role play and a lot of kind of working with kind of theater technique to get people to not freeze up so they couldn't ask questions and couldn't make other people feel com comfortable. Mm. So the mm -hmm. workshop, you know, mm -hmm. stuff was very helpful in that. And then as I say, I did also do um, theater, work, workplace theater. Yeah. And I, I think the workshops helped me understand that I was a teacher inside. As, and I became a teacher. I ran the theater company that I ran. Through that, I got a full scholarship to become a teacher, a scholarship to GW for graduate school, to become a teacher. And I worked with emotionally disturbed. I worked with incarcerated youth. And then ended up just working with children on the autism spectrum. But I always used theater in there. Theater always fed my classes. and. So it, was, it affected my whole life. Yeah. <laughs> did, did the end of Earth Onion end with the war, or why mm. did it sort of die out? I, I, don't, I don't think that it was a, um, a coincidence that the war ended when and Earth Onion ended. I think there were a lot of other things mm. going on. Clearly, what we were talking about, our own divisions and, mm -hmm. and interests changing, our, the, the society changing, the shift, the priorities changing. Development and, of and, 20 something. And when you look at the theater groups, the political theater groups that have, that have maintained, you know, Bread and Puppet Theater and, uh, you know, Luis Valles and, the, you know, the uh, San Francisco Mind Group, all that we worked with, they, they were run by two people or one person, mm -hmm. yeah. and they continued in that way. There are many other people that folded in and out. We were a unit more, mm -hmm. so that w it affected us uh, differently. And so we were a collective. Yeah. We were right. a collective. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it was it yeah. was different. And and mm -hmm. as as, no as yeah as 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 mm -hmm. you know, Susie mentioned about the whole process of not having writers and not having directors, and mm -hmm. you know that mm -hmm. had its disadvantages by the time we were really developing. We, it was hard for us to leave this piece of, of vignettes and, and, and hard for us, I know Susie's mentioned um, before, uh, to give each other space to just say, oh, now go take it and, and direct. We each had different talents for sure, but we, because we were very collectively minded, it made it sometimes hard to to actually loosen up enough to give each other the power to, to continue mm -hmm. in, in different ways. So there were lots of reasons for the And I think economics and, mm -hmm. you know, and kind of the development of, uh, you know, kind of as you go through your 20s and you think, okay, I've got to find, you know, my passion my, or, or my a way to make a living. And mm -hmm. people were, develop, were um, pairing up and going to families. And all that certainly affected it, too, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, we were living. Well, on a shoestring, shall I say? Yes. <laughs> yes. We, you know, uh, Talk a little bit about that. You know, living on a shoestring in those in, the, in those years. Um, you, some of you live together. Sorry, that's that. You, know? you can try. Yeah, just do the first so button on the right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, when I came mm -hmm. here in the anti-war movement and had a job for fifteen dollars a week, and survived mostly because. Mm -hmm. We could live in these uh, communes, these sort of. The right. <laughs> That's what was that? The right. Right. Just shut it off. Bottom. Yeah. Shut it off. The bottom right. And just sit where it says off. Yeah. And that, that might help. So, so we're talking mm -hmm. about living collectively. Yeah. Right. 
Yeah, so there were uh, there were communes, and uh, you know, yeah. they, uh, my first commune was a bit more like a flop house, but it was, <laughs> but it was uh, definitely. And then we had people who were um, supporting the activists that came to work in the anti-war movement, and they, you know, I so I lived in in houses, and mm -hmm. that people supported us that way, and that was really great. And and you could live on so much less. I mean, that ten thousand yeah. dollar grant yeah. carried us. Which was really yeah. remarkable. With mm -hmm. all, you know, there's nine women and children. And stuff. Yeah. The three yeah. of us lived together in a house with Carol at one right. point. So yeah. there yeah. were yeah. four yeah. of us. Yeah. Right. I think. Yeah. Once, and Carol had a little catering company where it was called Mother Nature on the Run, <laughs> and every morning yeah. <laughs> I would make bread, and if we got a job, we'd use the bread for the job, and if we didn't, we'd eat the bread. <laughs> The other thing we had that is, uh, again that didn't that doesn't exist anymore is we had collective health insurance. Carol created kind of a collective health insurance program for artists mm -hmm. and ran it and um, basically so it gave us and we're talking pretty good health insurance therapy, mm -hmm. um, you know, coverage. So. Uh, you know, a lot of the things that, that would be impossible to deal with now. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. I lived in a, a group house on, uh, you know, DuPont Circle, and we each, basically, our total cost of living a month was $25. Mm -hmm. And we had, so, you know, we had um, surplus food, and we had a huge house and about 10 of us in the house. And, and our apartments were, um, you know, yeah, $125 a month at the yeah. most, you know. I mean, so it, it was just, a different... You know, yeah, very very different, and that it breaks my heart to see young people now trying to do it. You know, yeah. to have an artistic career in the kind of times yeah. we live in, especially in the big cities. You know, yeah. trying to do it in, yeah. in New York and D.C. and San Francisco or any of the places that it's impossible to live for anybody, much less you know yeah. people who are trying to be artists. So. I I just wanted to mention one thing, which because uh, uh, about the influence of Earth Onion, because I have found that it took me. 11 years to get to do any kind of theater again, mm -hmm. and it was so disappointing <laughs> to do mm -hmm. it. It was very, very hard to replace that camaraderie and that that uh, 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 that inspirational um, way of thinking and waking up in the middle of the night with an idea and writing it down and we're going to do this and we're going to try this and having people that would work with you on that. And um, it, interestingly enough, um, I I did do a, a, a master's in education, and I and my focus was Paolo Freire, which was influenced by the interviews that we had had with with the people who had been you know working with him. And then later I did a much later I did another um, master's, and I worked with Sarah Lawrence Lightfoot, who was a, a wonderful um, a wonderful mentor who has a method methodology of social science research, and was encouraged to do a what she calls portraiture, and Earth Onion was the topic of that. And so hopefully you can show the movie that sort of was a result of some of that because there was, um, I wrote this piece, and then we had a, our 35th uh, reunion. Um, where not all of us were there, but six of us were there, and uh, it, part of it was interviews. So hopefully we can integrate that, that little vision, um, which was interesting. And the reason for that was to to show the importance of, of 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 the arts in in social movements. So, and I hope to go on to that with a PhD. So, who knows? <laughs> um, <laughs> you know this actually, ha you know, the Earth Onion experience really influenced the rest of your lives, which is one of our questions. You've answered mm -hmm. that. I'd like to jump ahead a little bit, and then Julie's going to read a poem, but um, and ask you. We've seen how that how it influenced you. What are you all doing now? you know, that comes from all that. <laughs> uh, well, right now, as I, I mentioned, I, I'm working with a... Could you just introduce yourselves? Because you really haven't... We actually, have, we actually haven't gotten everybody's names name. here, but we should... So just introduce your name yeah. when you do that. Okay, so... Your name? I'm, I'm Lynn Ditchfield now, but I was Lynn Glickson yeah. then. Um, uh, right now, I'm, uh, as I said, <laughs> I'm hoping to to write a novel that is going to be fictionalized because I don't want to lose my good friends, <laughs> but about um, about a theater group that 
that is in that period of time and sort of examining that period of time and a lot of other things like CD influences and things like that. But um, so that's something that I'm trying to, to, to work on. Um, I'm also working on a curriculum on immigration and it's arts based. So the um, so a lot of the a lot of the exercises we did <laughs> will be part of this curriculum on um, on immigration and and uh, as I said I've worked with uh, uh, you know um, women and teaching English through theater as and and so I will probably continue some of that and again through the immigration is sort of my my passion right now because it's such an issue that hits so many of my friends so um, so th but but theater is key to it all those theater exercises yeah how about you <laughs> I've been uh, basically um, mostly working on gun control issues for the past couple of years and working both uh, doing a m weekly vigil at the White House and also working with other organizations around organizing around gun control that will change as we have this wonderful new president who basically has just come out with his statement on gun control um, and guns for everybody. And so I'm thinking about how we can develop some theater pieces around that that we do around town. Um, and the other thing is I'm a half expat, so I spent half my time in Australia, which is very interesting in terms of their take on what's our election and our, our um, and gun thing control. and gun control, and especially gun control. And so that's been very interesting. So. And I am improvising with a hot little two and a half year old girl <laughs> <laughs> and enjoying every minute of it. <laughs> my granddaughter is a hot little actress and I'm going to start working in my grandson's school next week doing theater. And you, you, you didn't introduce yourself. Oh, yeah. Right. Oh, and, you're oh, doing and I'm, I'm Susie Phillips, but I was Susie Saul. And you? Lily. I'm Julie Huff. Okay. Yeah. And okay, and I want to say before you do your poem and close it out that um, our, our interviewers today have been Norma Lesser and Ann Gallivan, and our videographer has been Eddie Becker. So let's yeah. see. Your poem. This is a poem I wrote not too far after Earth Onion um, ended. And what's really scary when I read it today, I hadn't read it in a while. I usually read it at reunions, get it out in reunions and stuff. And I read it today and thought, oh my God, this is really <laughs> a little scary. So anyway, photo essay for Earth Onion. Turning through pictures like touching your faces. With the wind blowing over us in this one, our faces are blurred and happy. The filter of summer. In this one, our hats and masks. We would each be most definite. So definite that no one would ever know who we are. I'm screaming in beautiful rage in this but it is really pain. And here we are, all of us, dancing, dancing. Yesterday I wanted to cut them up, sever heads from bodies, bodies from each other, and scatter these across the room to lie in ashtrays among the plants and in the sink. Now I will make paper dolls to hang a neat little rose across my mirror, reminding me of all the possible cells we were. This raging girl I think I'll tuck under my skin somewhere. And all of us dancing, I'll make a tape to secretly play for backup music. Last night, you were all with me in a war. We joked and uh, ate together and diapered our children. We, uh, we sat on the porch and camouflaged, and, and camouflaged and watched for the enemy eating popcorn. I want this final picture that wins all the prizes. <laughs> I think it will be in a village when we are dusty in 95, in black dresses and drinking kirsch, we will hoarsely sing. <laughs> Thank you, Julie and Susie and Lynn. And we should mention Carol, Carol Weisberg and mm -hmm. Joanne Yes. So so this, yeah. who um, have both died, yeah. mm -hmm. and we yeah. miss them terribly. Yeah. yeah, miss them terribly. Yeah.